Happy Halloween beauties. It is here, the start of our Halloween week. I'm incredibly excited to, um, to start the series. Halloween is of course my favorite time of the year. Uh, we've put a lot of thought and effort into each one of these videos, both the topics that we're talking about today and throughout the entire week as we prepare for Halloween and the makeup looks that I'm going to do. Um, I will go ahead and preface this. The makeup is not really the priority here. I mean, it is. That's, that's wrong. It is. Obviously we're doing like costuming stuff. I'm just not going to talk about it the way I normally do. It's not like a first impressions. I'm not really going to be doing like a tutorial. You guys are just going to be kind of like watching me as I do my makeup uh, for the theme. And I've come up with topics to talk about that are related to Halloween or the topic at hand or the makeup at hand, I should say. That's a, that's a better way to say that. Yeah. Okay, so the big reveal for today's start. Um, this isn't really a costume. This is a pretty simple, like I could easily wear this day to day and people wouldn't be like, what up? What up girl? It's just a simple candy corn eye look. I was just trying to think of something that was cute and outfits that I have that would match. So I found my uh, my Disney Halloween jersey, spirit jersey from last year from 2019. Uh, it's candy corn themed. So the back of it, the, the it's, it's candy corn. Yeah, it's all candy corn colored and stuff. So I was like, well, let's do an eye look that matches that. And that's why I'm wearing my Disney ears. These may reemerge because we do have one more Disney themed look later on this week, but yeah. Today, we're gonna talk about, I wanna say the start of Halloween. It's not like all of the start of Halloween, but just kind of like how it was, you know, came to be, where the where the traditions came from, and also the history of candy corn. Might as well, right? Might as well throw that in there. Let's do this. Halloween. When was that word created? Well, if you're wondering that, it came from a poem that was published in 1785. Um, it was by Robert Burns. The breakdown of the word basically comes from like hollow, holy person, which is a nod to All Saints Day, which is November 1st. And Een, which is like uh, the ending would symbolize like Eve. So it's like, you know, like the day before All Saints Day. So Halloween, which makes it October 31st. That makes sense. Uh, really quickly, I did say I'm not gonna talk about the makeup and I'm not really going to, but I will show you. I have the Zulu, the Festival by Juvie's Place, and then I've got the paint palette from Glamlight, just because I felt like that gave me a good variety of like oranges and yellows and stuff. Uh, and I'll show you guys why. This one has a really pretty orange and a really pretty yellow in it. And then this one has a really beautiful white in it as well that I thought might help. I also have um, a liquid eyeshadow from Stila that's white. And then I've got my Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, lip palette, cause I'm gonna do candy corn on my lips too. So yeah, 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 yeah. So that's how we got the word Halloween. But it started, the tie, the original ties for it really were seen um, from Sam Hain, which was a Celtic festival that symbolized the summer's end, celebrated in Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Man. That's a pretty old tradition. I didn't, as I was doing my research, I actually didn't find like the exact date that we were looking at with 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 the, that that when it was going on, I should have looked harder. If I'm being honest, as a historian, I probably failed myself there. But I honestly didn't even think about trying to find that until like this very second. So yikes! Sorry guys. For Sam Hain, they would um, offer food and you know other gifts and celebrate the spirits of those who had passed in order to stay on their good side. Very similar to like in Mexico, we have Day of the Dead. It's it's very similar to that idea where you're just trying to um, to appease all of those who have passed. Um, and make sure that they are happy in the afterlife and they are going to bestow blessings upon you in your current life because you're still honoring them, you haven't forgotten them. People would also dress up um, and they would dress up as like evil spirits or demons to trick bad spirits who are walking around. So if a bad spirit like approached them, they would just think they're like, oh yeah, you're one of us. So they wore costumes. That was kind of the first time we saw like dressing up the idea of costumes and especially the idea of like scary costumes coming into play because they were trying to um, to look like they were just one of the ghost bros. Just I'm just a ghost bro, chilling, chilling on my day. So that's how we have that. Now the, it's, I read a couple of different things, but I think most people agree that the original date actually started in spring, like really early on. Pope Gregory the Fourth changed it uh, to fall in 837 because uh, the fall symbolizes, um, you know, passing and death and spring is more of a rebirth type feel. So they wanted to go with something that seemed a little bit more appropriate timing wise. I don't know. 
So, okay, let's move on into the, the, the history of trick-or-treating. How did trick-or-treating come to be? So of course we have Sam Hain where they were dressing up uh, in costumes and stuff. So that's where you kind of see the costuming come in. And that's like the first time we see that, that aspect of it. You got the costuming. And then you also have, you know, the gifts of food and all of that kind of coming back to the candy idea. But in the middle ages, when <laughs> the article I read about it was pretty funny. It was like when the Catholic church was like taking all the other religions holidays and making them you know, Catholic. And I was like, well, they did do that. So yeah. But so they were kind of gathering, they're trying to convert people really um, at a rapid rate. And so they they were pulling from other, other traditions and other religions, trying to bring in some of the ceremonies that would people would recognize in order to, um, to make conversions seem a little bit more tempting. You're like, oh, we do that, so cool. Um, so when that happened, when the Catholic Church uh, started to, to kind of take over holidays, they adapted a, a version of Samhain and turned it into what would be All Saints Day. That was during the Middle Ages. And during the Middle Ages, uh, of course, everybody whatever the Catholic Church did, pretty much people were like, okay, we're, we're coming. So that it became a pretty regularly celebrated thing. Trick-or-treating kind of started to take shape then because people would dress up, mainly kids, and they did say um, some poor people who were maybe needing help financially or were lacking food, they would dress up as angels or saints or even sometimes demons and they would uh, go door to door and perform prayers and songs for the the spirits that were supposedly around i have put a spell on you and now you're gone, 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 gone. my honey fell on you and it was strong so strong, so strong, so strong in order to uh to receive payment and food and and goodies and things like that so that's kind of like the idea, like where trick-or-treating came from. And this tradition was referred to as souling and those who would go door to door were referred to as soulers. I don't really know why that was the term that was chosen um, other than I guess they were, you know, supposed to be like representing the, the past souls. So maybe that's, that was where it came from. Interesting though, I was like, wow, what a, what a, kind of sounds cool. I kind of want to call it trick or treating souling instead of like, don't mind me, I'm just going souling guys. And people are gonna be like, what are you talking about? And why are you going souling you're 25? And I'll be like, because I want candy. So yeah, so that's that's where that tradition started. It kind of disappeared for a little while and didn't reemerge into the United States until like the 20s and the 30s. So it wasn't really something that happened much in the Americas at least during the middle ages. <laughs> but it did seem to make its appearance back in like the late 20s is from when I saw. And yeah, it just was kind of like the same vibe, like people would dress up and they'd go door to door. It did stop, it did take pause after uh, World War II because of sugar rushing. So they just didn't have like the ability to give out candy and, and other important goodies like they could have in other times because everything was so scarce back then. So that's when it kind of emerged in, uh, in America. Let's talk about candy corn. Candy corn had a fascinating history, actually. I was shocked at how much there was. I was like, I mean, I'm gonna look it up and we'll see, but like, is there a lot? Is there anything there? I don't even know. I'm actually going to, for the white part of it, I'm gonna use my little NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil um, because I think it's gonna give me a good base because I do wanna use that Stila. It's like a really nice pearlescent white. I said I wasn't gonna talk about the makeup, but I do kinda wanna just give you guys a little something, something to go off of. So the history of candy corn. If you didn't know, October 30th is National Candy Corn Day, which does make sense. You know, it's the day before Halloween, so people are thinking about it. But where, how did this tradition start? Where do we see candy corn emerging? Well, its foundations were, are, is, is thought to be around the 1880s. I didn't find a specific date. There wasn't like a, you know, on this day in 1881, sometime in the 1880s, we saw candy corn start to be produced. I didn't know this. This was a fast, this is one of those like history moments where like as somebody who loves history, you're just like, that is such a freaking cool fun fact. But apparently at the time when candy corn was being invented in the 1880s, most of the candy 
candies and treats like that were, I mean, they're very simple. It wasn't like a lot of intricacy. It was just sugar mixed with like, you know, cornstarch or whatever they had. But a lot of candy companies were making products that were like agricultural products. So they were in the shape of pumpkins or pecans or what was the other? Oh, uh, turnips. Yeah, because most people, half of the population at the time were farmers. So it made sense that they would be targeting the farmers as their main client and they would want to um, to, to make something that was cute and, and kind of represented something that they would care about. So I was like, that is really interesting. So that's why candy corn was, they made it in corn kernels. And it was an innovation too. It was another thing that they said. It was an innovation because it was one of the first candies ever to layer different colors. Even though there's no change in flavor in between the different layers, it layered colors and that really wasn't something that um, that we saw before candy corn. Uh oh, the yellow got on there a little bit. I gotta I gotta sharpen him. So the creator of candy corn, it is credited as George Redinger, um, who was an employee at the Wundela uh, Candy Company in Philadelphia. Wundela is a German candy company. He was just like a standard employee. They didn't, you know, they didn't say that he was like an owner or a you know CEO or one of the candy inventors, he just worked there and had this idea and said, let's do this and it, it worked. And I will say a lot of what I read too, is like, eh, the, the, because it was so long ago and it was like such an obscure thing to keep records of, like they're just, it didn't, there's not a ton of like certain knowledge of it, but this is what pretty much everybody believes to be the truth. So George, our friend George, he makes a candy corn and it's just corn syrup and sugar. That was all it was. Um, I'm assuming it's probably pretty damn close to that now. I don't think there's probably been much of an improvement on that. In 1898, this is also a German company. I didn't look up how to say this one. I think it's Golitz or Golitz. I could be wrong. Candy company, which is now Jelly Belly, picked up the recipe for it and they marketed it um, before World War I as chicken feed because um, apparently corn in, at least in America, was not seen as people food until after issues with rationing came forward again with World War One and World War II. They saw it as a cheap kind of tasteless food and so they would use it to feed livestock and that's why it, they marketed it as chicken feed. Once again, didn't know that. Fun facts coming at you all day today. Yeah, and in fact, I found a really cool quote from uh, Samira Kawash and she wrote a book called Candy, A Century of Panic and Pleasure, which tangent, I absolutely, that's my favorite part about history. I was talking to Nikki about it yesterday since we both have history degrees. Everything his, is history and everything has a history. And because of that, anything that you are interested in, you can write a book and research the shit out of for history. And I absolutely love that. Like everybody who loves history, they just don't realize that. I stand by that statement. Everybody has something that they're interested in. And the reason they're interested in it is because of something that happened in the past. That's history. Like you may not like like what they taught you in school, but you like history. It just, you gotta find what you like, so. So Samira Kawash in her book wrote, corn was coarse and cheap and not very tasty. Good for pigs and chickens. It wasn't until wartime wheat shortages in 1917 that any but the poorest Americans would have considered corn flour, cornmeal, or cornbread as acceptable foodstuffs. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Um, but it was just really interesting because it's such a staple in like, really every culture now, um, to think about it at one point being something that just like nobody would eat. Very, very fascinating to me. So after World War I, they continue to associate candy corn with chickens. They called it like, it was still marketed as chicken feed. And in the twenties, the packaging actually had a rooster on it who called himself the king of the candy corn fields. So they just kind of continued that on. And the first half of the 20th century, it was what they called penny candy. You could buy it really cheaply in bulk quantities. So kids loved it because you could get a bunch and not spend a lot of money on it. So you could convince your parents like, hey, can I have, you know, a penny and you can go down and get a good amount of candy corn. And it was bought year round at that time. You found it for Easter, you found it for Thanksgiving, really anything when you could think like corn would be there. And then in the 1950s, Halloween became more a candy centric holiday. And when that happened, candy corn really found its time to shine because it was, you know, kind of fall themed and there's a lot to offer with it being so damn affordable. That's kind of when it really became like a, an October treat. Now it's still sold year round, you can still find it, but most people associate it with Halloween. Okay, this is the final look, my candy corn vibe for day one of our Halloween. 
I like it. Um, the eyeliner is not really even on this one side and I hate putting on false lashes, but you know what? The false lashes are so large, you can't even see the eyeliner really. So yeah, I'm happy with how the look turned out. Definitely gives me candy corn vibes. I actually like the way it looked before I did the false lashes or the eye shadow, I mean the eyeliner either. So I probably would have been fine leaving it like that, but I figured let's do something special for Halloween. So if you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps an absolute ton. Um, if you like us, then we're doing this for the whole week. So subscribe, cause you got there's a lot more coming at you. More history, fun facts, more makeup, all of it. Other than that, I hope you guys are all super safe, healthy, you have a wonderful day, and you stay girly with the dark twist.